Okay, in this lesson we're going to talk about family functions, uh, parent functions, and the translation of those parent functions. So a family function is really the parent functions and their offspring, which are the translations with also stretches and shrinks. So we're going to talk about translations mainly in the context of absolute value functions today, but throughout the year we're going to translate a whole bunch of different types of graphs. Okay, so first of all, um, what is a parent function? Well, a parent function uh, is the simplest uh, function you can have. So if I said, what is the simplest way you could draw the equation of a line? It would just be this y equals x. That's a line. You need the y, you need the x, you need the equal sign. You don't want anything else or it gets more complicated. Um, so this would be the parent function for a line. If I said, okay, well, what does an offspring of a line look like? Let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let's add a slope that isn't 1. So in this case the slope is 1. This would be the offspring. Okay. Another example of offspring would be like y equals x plus 1. This would also be the offspring of this parent function. Um, in fact, any line is the offspring of that parent function. So if I said 2 thirds x minus 3, this is the offspring of that line. Okay, um, with absolute value functions, what is the simplest absolute value function you can have? Well, it's the equation of the line just with the absolute value there. So this is the parent function for an absolute value function. It's the simplest absolute value function. Uh, examples of offspring would be uh, translation, something with a stretch, which we'll talk about a lot more today. Um, another type of translation, or some combination of all of them. Uh, 2x plus 3 minus 1. So these would be offspring of this parent function. A translation is a specific type of offspring. A translation would be like this. One of these two or some combination of that. A translation is what shifts a graph either horizontally, vertically, or both. This one actually shifts the graph horizontally. This one shifts it vertically. And this would be an example of, uh, of both. This would shift horizontally and vertically. And we'll look at that um, a lot more today. So let's look specifically at vertical translations. So this is what a vertical translation would look like. First thing we need to know before we talk about translation is what is the parent function? Remember the parent function for an absolute value function, the simplest one you can have, is y equals the absolute value of x. Um, a reminder from yesterday's lesson, if I was going to write this as a piecewise function, it would be this. You would graph the line y equals x, which is this half of the line, when x is greater than or equal to 0. And you would graph the line y equals negative x when x is less than 0. So these two things are the exact same. But that's an aside. OK, so let's talk about the translation. What do we think that this negative 3 does? It's the only thing that's different between these two graphs. How does the negative 3 affect it? Well, let's plug in some points and see. When x is 0, um, if you plug in 0 here, you get negative 3 for y. Well, what happens over here? When you plug in 0 for x, you get 0 for y. Let's try a different one. Let's plug in 1 for x. When I plug in 1, I get 1 minus 3, because the absolute value of 1 is 1, which is negative 2. When I plug in 1 for x over here, I get 1 for y. Let's plug in a negative number up here. When x is negative 5, y equals absolute value of negative 5 minus 3, which is equal to 5 minus 3, which is equal to 2. So when x is negative 5, we're at 2. What about over here? If I plug in negative 5, I get positive 5. So let's look at these values and see the difference. The x values are all the same. How is this value different from that y value? Well, this y value is 3 greater than this y value. 1 is 3 greater than negative 2, and 5 is 3 greater than 2. So the x values are all going to be the same, and the y values are going to be shifted down 3 for this graph. So that negative 3 takes all the y values and shifts it down 3. So let's do that. If we took this value, shifted it down 3, this one down 3, this one down 3, down 3, and we did the same thing on the other side. 1, 2, 3. Take it and move it down. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 
you can see the graph is going to look like this. Every point, the x value is the same, the y value is shifted down 3. So this is what it would look like. y equals the absolute value of x minus 3. Let's look at GeoGebra real quick. This is a program that we're going to use throughout the year. Um, I have this function over here. Uh, g of x is in standard form. It's equal to a times mx plus b plus c. Okay, so and then I have my a, b, c, and m values over here. Um, so the way that this, that this graph right here, the red graph, is y equals the absolute value of x. We want to graph y equals the absolute value of x minus 3. So what needs to change? Which value? A is going to be 1, that's what it is right here. And, I mean here. M is going to be 1, that's what it is. B is 0, we don't have a B. C is the value that needs to change, the thing that's out here. So let's go ahead over here to C and shift C down. I mean shift C over to 3, but C needs to be negative 3. So let's shift it to negative 3. And then this is what the graph looks like. It shifted it down. If we keep shifting it, you can see that that C value only shifts the graph up and down. If everything else stays the same, the graph moves up and down when C changes. Let's go back to... Here we go. Okay, horizontal translations. Um, when the graph is shifted to the right or to the left, so again we have the same parent function in black, right here y equals absolute value of x. This blue graph is the same as the black graph, it's just shifted over here. Instead of the point 0, 0, uh, like in the black graph, we have the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. We have the point 5, 0. The x value is shifted. Instead of this point, 1, 1, we have the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over. This is the point 6, 1. Every point on this graph is shifted 5 to the right. What does the equation of that look like? Let's go back to GeoGebra and, and see. Alright, let's clear this stuff off. Okay, so let's put C back to 1 for now, or 0. Uh, and let's shift the B value, the stuff that's with the X. The B value is what shifts the graph horizontally. And that makes sense, right? The value that goes with X, the horizontal um, axis, shifts the graph horizontally. Okay, so what do we think that this graph might look like? Well, this graph has shifted over here to the right 5, so you might think Okay, let's change that B value to 5. So up here, it's 0. Another way to write it is x plus 0, right? Uh, and that's the same thing as this, the parent function. So we're changing it from 0 to 5. Let's see if that works. Let's plug in a value to test it. Well, here's one value that we know should be. We should have the point 5 comma 0. When I plug in 5 for x, I should get 0 for y. But right now, if I plug in 5 for x, I get 10 for y. So that's this point, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up here, which is definitely not on the graph. So we were wrong when we thought that this was the answer. The real answer is x minus 5. It's a little bit confusing. It's something that you wouldn't think that um, would be correct, but it is. When you translate something, when you shift it to the right 5, what we're saying is we need this point to be on the graph. So if I plug in 5 for x, I need y to equal 0. So the way that you do that is, here's your equation. So the horizontal translations, it's the opposite. And if we look at GeoGebra, you can, you can see that on here. Uh, when B is negative, it shifts the graph to the right. When B is positive, it shifts the graph to the left.
Okay, so here, describe the translation of y equals x plus 3 and draw its graph. Well, this is a positive 3, and what we just said is when x is positive, I mean when b is positive, it shifts the graph to the left. So we know this graph is going to be shifted to the left. The, that's actually the only thing that's different. It shifted to the left 3. So if I take points off this graph and I move it over 3, let's take this point and move it over 1, 2, 3, this point, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's take this point, one, two, three, one, two, three, the graph is going to look like this, except straight lines, not squiggly ones. So the graph is shifted to the left, three. Again, it's kind of the opposite of what you might think, but that's the way that absolute value functions work. Nothing else changes because there's nothing else in this equation to shift it. So we've talked about translations. That's shifting the graph horizontally or vertically. Let's talk about changing the shape of the graph with a stretch or a shrink. A stretch is when you um, take a, a graph that looks like this, the parent function, you grab both of the top values and you pull them up. And that's where the term stretch comes from. Okay, So it pulls them up like that. You're stretching them upward. Um, and so it changes the graph to look like this, this middle thing. It's multiplying all the values. Um, another way to think about it, if I had this graph, remember this is the same thing as the graph y equals x and y equals negative x. So if I was going to stretch this graph by multiplying it by something bigger than 1, what I'm doing is I'm changing the slope of both of these lines. Instead of y equals x, now instead of going up 1 over 1, I go up 1, 2 over 1, and that's why the graph is stretched this way. So here's the other half of, of this part. Let me use two different colors so that it's clear. Okay, so this is the graph of y equals x, and then the graph of y equals 2x, I would go uh, over 1, up 2, and it would look like this. So that's what a stretch looks like. A shrink is the opposite. A shrink is kind of like uh, if you had a graph that looks like this, okay, if you pushed down on the tops of these two arrows, it might shrink them down like this. Like an old person. Get smaller and fatter as you get older. Okay, um, so that's what a shrink does, and it, what, what happens if this was x, a shrink would look like that, one half times x. Now it's also no, uh, interesting to notice, you could have a stretch that looks like this, uh, 2x, or you could have a stretch that looks like this. You could have a shrink that looks like this, or you could have a shrink that looks like this. If the a or the m value changes, um, it stretches or shrinks the graph. So let's look at this. Describe and then draw the graph of y equals 2 over x. Well, 2 is a value that's greater than 1. So that means we're going to have a stretch. That's the difference between a stretch and a shrink. A stretch multiplies by some number greater than 1. A shrink multiplies by some number between 0 and 1. OK, so we're going to we're going to have a stretch that's going to we're going to grab these two and we're going to pull them up this direction but this point can't change so they're going to get pulled this way and we're going to have uh, something that looks like this okay to figure out exactly what that is um, you you just change the slope of this line right now you go up one over one up one over one up one over one now the slope is going to be two so we go up one two over one up one two over one 1, 2 over 1. And so it's going to look like this. Up 1, 2. Wow, that was really bad. But fortunately, I think I've done it nicer there. Yeah. So that's what uh, that stretch looks like. Uh, write an equation for a vertical shrink of a factor of 1 half. You could write it like this or you could correctly write it like this.
That's also a vertical shrink. Let me show you in GeoGebra. Okay, I'm going to take this value and put it back at zero. Um, the A value is in blue and the M value is in green. If I took M and I put it at uh, one half, um, then the, the graph would look red like this, right? Let me put M back at zero. Uh, oh, not zero, one. M can't be zero. Uh, let's take A and put it at one half and see what happens. Okay, you see how we have the same graph? If that A value or that M value changes, it's going to shrink the graph. Let's see if I can zoom in on this and get a better view. Okay, so that's how A and M, uh, A and M both change. Now, if you have both an A and an M, then you get something interesting. They kind of cancel each other out or work together. So if that's one, let's make a stretch with A and then let's shrink it down with M and it goes back. So 2.5 times 0.4, what does that equal? So think about that. It's very interesting the way that these work together. Um, let's make M a negative number. Now let's make A a negative number. What happens if you make A a negative number? So A and M are not the same thing. When A is a negative number, it flips the graph. When M is a negative number, it doesn't. So let me put A back to 1. When M is a negative number, it still goes up. That's because the M is inside the absolute values. But when A becomes a negative number, we flip the graph. That is called a reflection. And that's the next thing that I'm going to talk about here. A reflection in the x-axis changes the y values to their opposites. So the only thing that can reflect the um, graph across the axis is when the a value is negative. The a value is the thing that's outside the absolute value. So which equation describes this graph? Okay, hopefully you pick C. Um, because the a value is negative one half. This is not an absolute value function. That's actually the graph of a line that looks like this. D is the graph of a line that looks like that. Um, a is an absolute value function that looks like this. So that's the graph of A. And then that is the graph of C. So a review of the vocabulary from today, we have a parent function. That's the simplest function within a family of functions. So see if you can remember what is the parent function for a line. The parent function for a line is y equals x, the simplest function within a family of functions. What is the parent function for an absolute value function? y equals the absolute value of x. Um, here, here are a couple other parent functions. These graphs, this is a quadratic or a parabola. You might remember that from Algebra 1. This is a cubic. It looks something like this. Actually, that one looks more like that. Um, an exponential function, the parent function, would be uh, something like b raised to the x. Uh, logarithmic, well, we'll get to those later. But parent functions, there's a whole bunch of them. It's the simplest function within a family of functions. A translation. A translation shifts the parent function either horizontally, vertically, or both. It doesn't change the shape of the graph or the size. It just moves it to a different position. A stretch. Stretch multiplies all the y values by the same factor greater than 1. It's like you grab the top two parts of the graph and you just pull them up or down. Um, and it stretches the graph out. Shrink. Um, it's like the vertex can't change in either of these. And with a shrink, it's like you grab those two values and you push them down. Shrink is when you multiply by some value between 0 and 1. A reflection is when you multiply by a negative number, and so it reflects the values across the axis. And that's it for absolute value function 